When I was a child, I loved to play with dirt. My parents are professional agronomists, and from early years, they taught me how to grow our own vegetables in our garden in southern Russia. They taught me how to care for land and be mindful about our surroundings. But in my heart, I wanted to become a fashion designer. I spent hours crocheting and knitting and sewing the skills that taught my grandmother, Pasha. She was a seamstress and subscribed to these beautiful magazines filled with designs for sewing, crochet, and knitting. I still have them. And alongside those creative moments, I was learning something else. We always say that soil grows our food, but no one talks that it also grows our clothes. Every natural fiber begins in the soil. No soil, no fashion. Ironically, the industry that relies on soil for its raw materials the most is also one of the leading causes of its degradation. Soil is more than just dirt. It's a complex living system. Underneath our feet, there are billions of microorganisms that work to break down organic matter cycle nutrients, sequester carbon. This biological activity determines soil fertility, plant health, and ultimately the quality of fiber, cotton, hemp, flax. When soil is rich in organic matter and well-structured, it supports deeper root systems, better water retention, fosters biodiversity, and helps to produce more durable fiber longer lasting fabric that would require less chemical inputs during production, textile production, and last, uh, leading to garments that would eventually last much longer. But when soil is degraded, compacted, eroded, and full of chemicals, it cannot produce healthy fiber. The fiber it grows becomes weak, short, really poor quality that create a fragile textile that can really wear it much faster. At the same time, the soil, degraded soil, requires more chemical inputs, more fertilizer, more pesticides, irrigation, driving up resource consumption and environmental costs. This cycle is unsustainable. It's a cycle of diminishing input, diminishing returns, more inputs for fewer outputs. Regenerating soil health isn't just responsibility of agriculture. It's essential for a more sustainable fashion. Healthier soils produce healthier crops, healthier fiber, and it's a shift away from disposable trend. But what happens when we neglect our soil and treat it as disposable just like we do with fashion? I saw the consequences firsthand. In 2015, I attended a soil conference in Mexico City as a PhD student in Earth and Environmental Sciences. On our field trip, they took us to a polluted creek filled with trash and discarded clothing. I was shocked and sad. I wondered if all cities around the globe look like this. Globally, 20% of industrial water pollution comes from textile dyeing and treatment. Every year, the microplastics released from washing our textile equals the impact of 50 billion plastic bottles. That experience in Mexico reminded my own village, where our neighbors, neighbors would throw garbage into the same creek that fed our water supply. Those experiences made me realize that the way we treat our Soil, our environment, really affect what we eat, drink, what we wear. Those moments and experience shaped my future mission to bridge the gap between soil and fashion and show how we can transform both. For decades, fast fashion, fashion. For decades, fast fashion industry, the rapid production and sale of large quantities of cheap, trendy clothing, has been one of the Earth's biggest polluters. When we think about fashion, we think about vibrant patterns, uh, glassy runways, and clothing racks brimming with choices, right? 
but we don't see the hidden cost. The resources that went to produce that clothes, starting with soil. Fashion pollution affects soil, water, agriculture, and human health. But if we shift to synthetic fibers, it doesn't fix the problem, it creates a new one. Polyester and other petroleum-based products, they shed microplastics into the environment. They pollute our soil, water, even the air we breathe. This microplastic is persistent for generations in our environment, disrupting entire ecosystems. <sighs> Sustainable uh, fashion really relies on regenerative practices. And I think the clothes could uh, heal our planet. What if the clothes we wear could heal our environment? What if we did things differently? Regenerative agricultural practices rebuild, restore, regenerate. More organic matter in the soil, less carbon in the air. How do we restore the soil health? How do we replenish lost soil nutrients? By practices like cover crops, crop rotation, minimal soil disturbance. When we use this practice, when farmers use these practices, we replenish nutrients, we foster biodiversity, we reduce erosion, we help soil to produce better quality crops, longer lasting fabrics. We help to restore the environment, reduce uh, fashion's greenhouse gas emissions. The textile sector, by the way, every year produces two to eight percent of green global greenhouse gas emissions. It uses 215 trillion liters of water, equivalent 86 Olympic-sized swimming pools. It takes 2,700 liters of water to produce one cotton shirt. Enough drinking water for a person for two and a half years. Every second, a garbage truck full of clothes is dumped in a landfill or burned. Yet, we rarely think between the connection, soil and fashion. Soil beneath our feet and clothes on our back. So how, using these practices, farmers can replenish the lost nutrients and lost life? For example, cover crops, winter rye and crimson clover can break down compacted soil, help water move through the soil, make nutrients more available by breaking down organic matter, preparing crop for the next cycle. When farmers uh, cycle crops like um, cotton and uh, legumes. Legumes help to restore nitrogen levels naturally in between cotton. By minimizing soil disturbance, we can reduce soil erosion and foster biodiversity. These practices have numerous benefits, from increasing yield to sequestering carbon to overall support healthy ecosystems. Imagine if all the brands work with farms that prioritize soil health. Fashion would shift from being a pollutant to being a solution. Imagine a world where fashion is a source of waste, but a symbol of regeneration. Genes that contribute to healthier soils, dresses that tell a story of a farm that sequesters carbon, the clothes we wear could become a powerful reminder how our clothes can heal our planet. Every time you buy clothes, you cast a vote for the future you want. How we treat our clothes, how long we keep it for, what is it made of, really matters. Those ideas aren't new. The, in the past, these generations understood it very well. Sustainability, before our times wasn't a choice, it was a way of life, right? 
My grandmother, who I mentioned to you at the beginning, was a seamstress. And she created these beautiful patterns, garments for her clients and also for my mother and her siblings. The garment shortages or fabric shortages back in the day was a real problem. So it meant that garments had to last. Mending and upcycling were not trends. They were survival skills. That mindset carried forward and my mom kept my childhood clothes. So now my little niece wears them at home 30 years later. It tells me that the quality of what we buy and how we care for it really matters. People often think that I have a huge closet in a shop all the time. In reality, I don't like shopping and I prefer to wear my clothes for as long as possible by repairing it and mending it instead of replacing. My favorite personal style tip is to mix and match my old garbage with newer pieces of clothes. I choose classical cuts and uh, minimal patterns to make my outfits look timeless. If we all doubled how long we wear our clothes, we would reduce fashion greenhouse gas emissions by 44%. So now that we understand these connections between soul and fashion, we can really rewrite the story. What can you do on a personal level? How can you choose more sustainable fashion? Start with your own closet. Look for natural fibers. Avoid using synthetics like polyester or nylon that shed microplastics into the environment. Reduce that microplastic by using a washing bag or a filter that would reduce microplastic by 90%. Buy secondhand, donate that you no longer wear, and repair what you love. Look for certifications like Regenerative Organic Certified or brands that are transparent about their practices. Most importantly, ask questions. What is it made of? Where does it come from? Who made it? Transparency forces accountability. Talk about this connection. Share what you've learned today with your friends, family, and community. Consider the ripple effect. If more people understood how their wardrobe choices impact fashion has on the planet. This is bigger than shopping habits. It's about redefining fashion from a disposable trend to a force that can heal our planet. It's about seeing fashion as a part of something greater. Soil, farms, ecosystems, and us. Your choices matter. Every garment you buy could contribute to a healthier planet. The regenerative cotton in a t-shirt comes from the same soil that absorbs carbon, reduces erosion, and fosters biodiversity. By investing in soil, we are rebuilding ecosystems. Fashion brands have enormous power. But so do we. When we demand transparency, sustainability, and regenerative practices, brands are forced to listen. We have seen this happen before, when industries shift, when consumers push for change. It starts with you, your choice, your voice, your willingness to rethink what you wear. Together, we can create a world where fashion is a powerful ally in healing the planet. The question is, will you choose to take that step? Tomorrow morning, when you get dressed, I want you to ask yourself a question. What kind of world am I wearing? Because fashion isn't just a fabric, it's a story. And right now, we have the chance to rewrite it. <laughs>